gonna be a little baby stool to sit on or something. Hi, chair. <laughs> All right, we're alive now. Ooh, Ginter early, so I can't escape late, huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Landon? Mike? What's up, True Seeker? Yeah. What's up, Jacob? Kedrick's here. Be sure to say hi to Kedrick. Hey, guys. How are we doing? Everything's shipped. Uh, counting the vet stuff, I'll say 200 and... 40 orders. Uh, about 240. 240 orders. What's up, Carl? Got a guest tonight, so shirt with a collar. <laughs> hey, Landon. Not much. Just getting the sorting hands ready. <laughs> Go get my mask. What's up, TJ? Hi, Connie. Connie, hey, I missed Connie. out on your amazing Raz, another Connie Raz. I totally missed out. Big night tonight. Oh, don't start yawning. <sighs> Diamond Dave. Dave killed it on loop yesterday. Back on loop tomorrow, if you guys are curious. Kedrick brought a ton of stuff up for me today, so watch for some new breaks, too. Oh, uh, yeah, lots of good stuff. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. What's up, Ryan? Yeah, tell your boss you got stuff to do. <laughs> That's the best way to handle that. Grab him by his arm and say, listen, dude, I don't need to be micromanaged. I'll get to it. I'll get to it when I'm good and ready. What's up, Dave? Yeah, guys, so everything shipped. Um, check your email or your spam folder if you don't see your tracking. What's up, Nick? Hey, Nick, how we doing? Uh, I don't know, Carl. Maybe tonight if I get done in time. Um, Aaron's working on a hockey pick your team for me for Series 1, so that'll go up here tonight or early tomorrow. <laughs> Hard to uh, do work. Working from home. <laughs> yeah. Just drive to his house, man. Just drive to his house. It's the best way. Get it out of the way. It'll be uncomfortable at first, but it'll work out. That's the best uh, advice I could give you. Yeah, he'll admire the drive you took to get there. <laughs> yeah, it shows initiative, really. What's up, Tom? Hey, Tom. Tom, I think you're the only one that gets the um, the tweet, uh, meanwhile, over at Anything Goes with the old people. It's a shot at one of our favorite RoboPlug sites. You know, Dave, I, I wouldn't mind that. Actually, I can probably give most post office people a run for their money. No offense, but... <laughs> yeah. All right, we're at 25 people. Obviously, exciting night. So here's what's up. All the, like I said, all the shipping's out. I'll get some new stuff up soon. Ked just picked some stuff up. We'll be on loop tomorrow. Hockey's coming. But tonight we're doing triple threads. Pick your team one and two. I just brought the numbers back down. Uh, it would have been actually triple threads, like 800 or whatever. Um, the Ginter, Ginter X Mixer with our special guest, Pedro Gomez from ESPN. I'll call Pedro when it gets time to that break. And he can chat with us. We'll ask him all kinds of cool questions. Um, the threads and snapshots random off the site. The threads and snapshots Discord draft. The member appreciation draft, which is basically a break I did at cost. Uh, Phoenix random number seven. I'm out of fingers almost. Illusions divisions break number three. And the clearly Donruss tiered break number three. Trying to look at a crack of wax put up there. He was not subscribed. <laughs> Crack and Wax was not subscribed. Wow. What's up, Braxton? My grandson Braxton's watching. What's up, dude? 
Well, hey, let's get him on the show, Jordan. Let's get him on. Let's do that. Um, so let me take you to the site real quick. All right, you guys, you can ask him that. Tom, I'll forget. I've already forgot things Kedrick asked me five minutes ago. <laughs> let me take you to the site real quick. If you're sitting here wondering, hey, this looks awesome. How do I get in? You go to MidwestBoxBreaks.com. Secure website takes PayPal and credit card. DM me if you want a coupon code to save some money. MBB10 will save you 10%, but I've also got a $5 coupon code. Here's what's on there now. Um, another installment of that clearly Donruss break, which you'll see tonight. Museum, 19 triple threads, Inception, Finest, and another update jumbo. Possibly the last update break we'll do. Again, hockey's coming. Some other stuff's coming. I've got more football, XR, Illusions, possibly some more Phoenix. Cool. Let's get them on, Jordan. Um, I think update my plugins. Oh, I have a bunch of plugins not updated. All right, so where does that take us? So if you're new, know that all cards ship all the time for everybody. Uh, WordPress. Uh, Craig will get that for me. Um, if it's your first break, you get something extra added in your mail day. I just bought a bunch of football stuff because I was low on football for uh, new people. A bunch of inserts and parallels and prisms and colored cards and whatnot. Uh, Madden Crazy Titans fan hooked me up with a sweet deal. So anyway, I throw extra stuff in on your first mail day. If you're in your first break and you totally skunk it, don't get anything. I'm still going to send you a mail day. All right, so threads PYT1. We're going to rip these two threads breaks, and then we'll give Pedro a call and ask him if his refrigerator is running. <laughs> All right, anybody? Uh, Ryan Salato, welcome back with the Jays. Uh, Richie G. Julia got her Red Sox. Julia got her Red Sox. Zach, welcome back. Zach, hopefully schooling from home is working okay for you. I heard Michigan's about completely shut down. Uh, TJ, Captain Kelly. Let's True, roll. True seekers, you get the uh, Twitter spot. Twitter's info, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, he'll be in this in a little bit. Uh, we've got that. All right, so let's rip. What's up, Zach? Be sure to sub. Last time I looked, we were at 2670. And loop tomorrow. Yep. Goat jerseys set us up with another guest, so be sure to follow our buddy Joseph, a.k.a. Gino. Is it just at goat jerseys, or what is it, Gino? He got us uh, Tyler Kepner last week and Pedro Gomez this week. Okay, show me those TTTs. All right, here we go. John Means, base rookies and future phenom, autographed relic card, emerald parallel. Hmm. That is for Anthony. What's up, Anthony? Is that gold jerseys on Twitter? Goat jerseys. Go, go. At goat jerseys yeah, go on Twitter. Yeah. Vlad Jr. Huge dark blue patch. Jaybirds, that's for Ryan. Wagner to 75, McCutcheon 199. All right. Piece of Sky Dome roof, yeah. Soto. Big unit, Chapman, Pudge Rodriguez, slugging catcher, number to 18, Rangers. You guys would think you'd see a Rangers hit tonight. Diamond David Diaz, slugging catcher. What's up, 404 Braves? What's your real name, or do I just call you 404 Braves? Um, I don't know. Did we hit a one-on-one -on -one Friday? I don't think we did, Eric. Nope, we missed it. The streak's over. 
<clears throat> so Ripken and the 72 Dolphins can pop their champagne. <laughs> Mike Trout, big napkin relic, number one of 18. Angels, David Diaz. Means David has a hit streak going. If he wants to turn it into a kill streak, he needs one more hit. And a bunch of people are getting a $5 credit. I'm going to lose my ass. Yeah, he's all over the board. <laughs> all right. Willie Mays, 275. Yoshi, 299. It'll be like uh, Michael Scott on uh, The Office. I declare bankruptcy! Bankruptcy! <laughs> Box two. Yeah, it is a good night to start a new streak with the one of Yeah, we can. Yeah, I threw it in the wrong place. Guys, we had an unforced error already. I threw the <laughs> recycling into the mini boxes that we use for shipping. Uh, 404, that's a tough question. That's like asking me how long is the third inning going to last. It just depends. just depends. The good news is you can... Uh, it uploads to YouTube immediately after we're done, and I'll give you a cheat sheet. I'll tweet it where it's got timestamps, and you can go right to your break. You'll be able to skip right to it. What are you in? You're in the mixer. There's a bunch of mixers, so I'm not sure. Oh, he got you for 40 in the break the other night. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Deafness? Hey, Deaf. How we doing? Posey, Wagner, Mattingly. <laughs> Error. Johnny Damon. Red Sox, Johnny Damon, not recognized by Midwest Box Breaks. Red Sox, that's for Julia. Sorry, Julia. Red Sox <laughs> for nice hit, Julia. our friend Julia. Johnny Damon, leadoff heroics, number to 18. John's here. Hell, everybody's here. Nice. How many people you got in the tube? Let's see. Yeah, right 53. Nice. Mike Trout, another huge relic. For Diaz. Numbered. Oh, I didn't even pay attention. Did Dave kill his streak? He did. Yeah. Julia knocked him off. She's the cooler. Another trout. Trout are biting tonight. You, yeah. mi you might have a tick, Brian. You probably want to check. <laughs> Aquino, judge. Check for ticks. If you're getting that biting feeling. All right, here's a big fat pop tart for you. That trout abides. Piazza, worst defensive catcher in Major League history. Posey, Wagner, David Dahl. Two out hero to 18. Rockies, Daniel O'Connor. That's his team, too. What's up, Nick? Slick Nick. Danny Jansen Machine. To 75, Blue Jays. That's for Ryan again. There's a lotion. There is a lotion. <laughs> Puts a lotion in the cards. Ryan 29, Piazza 50. I already told you how I feel about that. <laughs> All right, here's your last box mojo. All right, no errors on this one. No errors. All right, recycling goes to the recycling, trash goes to the trash. Oh, my God, I think I'm going to pull this off. If I can get the mini box into the box over the center field wall. Yeah, that sounded like it went in, although I didn't take the plastic off. Perfection. All right, last box, guys, last box. Henderson, Moe, Kershaw, Glaber, All-Star Game patch Whoa. to nine. <laughs> that is for Captain Callie. That's a sick patch. Number to nine. Yes, we are due for a white whale. Nice job, Captain Callie. Sick patch. Brendan McKay. Rays, that's for Joseph Humphrey and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Nice job, Joseph. Uh, Ernie Banks, Molina. Need a little Captain Caveman screen in the here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you go, there's Brian McKay. Yep, we get that, too. Ortiz, Brooks Robinson, Ichiro, Jorge Polanco. 
Twinkies to 99. That's Kraken Wax's team, I think. Polanco to 99. That's for Jacob. Uh, Robel Garcia to 36. Cubby Bears, that's for Lando. Lando just celebrated a birthday. I feel like Willard Scott. Uh, George Brett, 275, the Jesus Lizard. What's up, Colby? All right, here comes your recap, brought to you by Gold Bond Medicated Powder. Kedrick says when he sorts Tops Update, he uses <laughs> Gold Bond Medicated Powder for his chafing and his chapping. All right, John Meanswell. All right. It's all that massage therapy on my fingers when I'm done sorting. Next breaks on the site, guys, are Wednesday. I got a sheet for you right here. Yep. Next breaks are Wednesday. I need a little help. The site has a bunch of stuff in the 20s. So Inception, Update, um, Museum, Triple Threads Random. I think there's six breaks on there. But a bunch of stuff in the 20s, so we'll need a little help. All right. We're going to switch you over to break number two. Hey, Joseph, did... uh. Pedro, go to school with Conseco? Did I see that right? Uh, who are we looking for here? Coach, Cardinals, cheating on his Cubs. Lando's got the Cubs in this. Uh, Julia's Red Sox again. Carl's got the Royals. Uh, everybody else you know, guys. Hey, here's Pedro! Pedro was lurking. What's up, dude? I plan on giving you a call here in about uh, 10 minutes, sir. I jumped in already? Yeah, welcome. Nice. Welcome to Midwest Box Breaks. I'm Ben. Hey, Pedro. That's the voice of Kedrick. Kedrick is my <laughs> first full-time employee. Quite possibly... Hey, guys. Quite possibly my last. He can't respect social distancing. <laughs> yep, give me... Um, we're going to finish this breakup. I'll give you a call. That's awesome, man. Appreciate you being here. So you probably have free Conseco car washes for life, I'm thinking. Appreciate your time, man. This is going to be cool. All right, guys. Here we go. Pedro's going to bring us a little luck in this break. Cobb, Ruth, Yelly, Kershaw, Bellinger, Bueller, numbered 9 of 9. Dodgers, Matt Connerly, new guy. That is Matty Light. What do you think, Matt? Kershaw, Bellinger, Bueller, 9 of 9. All right. Uh, next up, Josh Hader. I'll be honest, that's not as cool. Uh, Brewers, Chris Heiser. I don't know if Matt's watching tonight or not. Clemente, number to 50. Ozzy Smith, 199. All right. Do, do, do. Trevor Story, Frank Thomas, Devers. David Ortiz, Big Poppy, Big Poppy, Big Stats. Red Sox, Sox, sorry. It's a Freudian slip. I do that all the time. This is for Julia. Julia has been destroying it as a new member 
of the hidden Red Sox clan that these guys form behind my back and don't tell me. Here's Crump. I knew he'd like that Dodger card. All right. I know you guys talk about me and my Yankees, too, behind my back. So there you go, Julia. Uh, the Jesus Lizard. Bow down. This is to 55. That is for Can't Miss Keith. Because he can't miss. Votto Springer. All right, box two. Pedro, have you bought any recent product? I know you've got like an old school collection, 60s and 70s and stuff. You, What's the most recent thing you've purchased? And if you've got it uh, given to you, because you're a baseball guru, um, that's okay too. I don't know if Tops hooks you up or anything. All right, box two. Oh, we need to get you some cards. We'll work on that. Bregman, Sandberg, Otani, Seth Brown. This is a par three, I think, guys, if you put it like this. That's to 75. Athletics, Keith. Keith is a huge athletic supporter. There you go, Keith. Congrats. And my Nico magnet works, but it's only set to patch. Sorry, Lando. One day removed from his birthday, Lando got a patch. If it was your actual birthday, Lando, this probably would have been an auto. This is the 36. Uh, Pedro's going to be in the next break, John. That is a great idea, though. I guess we better get him in one. Griffey Larkin. Ooh, this one feels heavy. Mattingly, that's my PC player. Merrifield, Verlander. Acuna, Freeman, Albies. Number to 36, Braves. That is for Sidney Brown. Yep, there's a card show in Plainville. Tom G is hobby royalty. He would take care of you, Hudson fan. Aquino, the Punisher, to 25 Reds. That is for David Scott. That is for David Scott. What's up, David? Nico Horner, 199. DeGrom, 275. Last box. Good luck. This is your last box mojo. Yep, we're doing all right. Guys, be sure to sub. I think we're at 2670. There's 53 people watching out. And remember, if I don't hit 3,000 by the new year, I've got to lay Kedrick off. Yeah, I've just like everybody else, a lot of people working from home has its advantages and disadvantages. Max Muncy, on base streak, Dodgers, three of three. Dodgers tearing it up. That's for Matt. So, yes, please subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe, or Kedrick will not get a Christmas bonus. He's not getting one anyway, but Matt Olson, A's again. Oh, Ben, it's 36. just a bonus being able to be right next to you. Nice. <laughs> get my chapstick. <laughs> Keston Hura, Nico Horner. All right, last pack, guys. This could just be Pop Tarts. I always wonder about that. Unsubscribe, wow. <laughs> Munson, Ortiz, Brooks Robinson, Yadier Molina. Keep them alive. That scares the hell out of me, I'll be honest. Uh, this is for Coach. 
coach, hey, coach cheating on his cup, so I will donate this to the kids because you cannot have that. <laughs> All right, uh, and another Brennan McKay to 99. Love balloons. That's for Todd Warren. Acuna 299, Larkin 199. Your recap. All right. Um, your next sheet's right on top there. Yep. Gotcha. Reds POIT2. Okay, so here's what, yep. here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run the random for the next break, and then I'm going to call Mr. Gomez. This is the Allen Ginter Ginter X two box mixer. And Pedro is in this break. All right, let me switch you over here real quick. Pedro, how this works is um, so people don't have to spend money based on what's in their checklist for each team. There's a randomizer program called random.org. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scramble all the teams, and there's a 31st team down here that says non-MLB. If you haven't seen Allen and Ginter, there's a bunch of weird stuff that doesn't belong to a major league team. You'll see here in a minute. All right, so we're going to scramble those. And anybody can go to random.org, enter the code I'm going to give you here at the end, and check this out round by round and make sure it's legit, or maybe you just like watching randoms run. If you're that bored, I've got stuff that you can help with, so let me know. And I think Pedro's a Tigers fan. We'll see what we can get him. W I Q Q L I. And then what I'll probably do is I'll rip all the packs and uh, we'll spend some time talking to Mr. Gomez. And then uh, I don't want to make a bunch of pack noise while we're trying to converse. So, All right, here's the owners of the spots. Again, Pedro's in this as well. All right, your verification code for this is EDQFEQ. I'll pair these up and then I'll tell you guys trades are open. You can spend a couple minutes trying to make trades. And I'm probably going to open both boxes quietly to buy us some time. I think. <laughs> quietly is a relative term. All right, guys, trades are open. Trades are open. Pedro, do you want to try for your Tigers? Right now you have the cheating Astros. Who's got the Tigers? Corby. All right, uh, new people in this, of course, Pedro Gomez, Matt Sandberg, welcome back. Yeah, let's see what he wants. I don't know who's Tigers or Corby. I don't know if Corby's here. Lewis has the Phillies. Welcome, Lewis. I think Lewis might have been in a break before. He's also got the Yanks. Kevin Locke's back in. So you're saying you were in on it is what you're telling me, Pedro. That's how I'm reading that. Have you ever hit a trash can before? All right, 
I don't want to make it awkward. I'm, of course, I'm teasing, but I'm pretty sure they did cheat. All right, Ginter, Ginter X Mixer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm blaming the media. All right, phone time. Ooh, I'll, Chris and I will take that card. Hey, Kristen. Say hi real quick before it gets on you. All right, Mariners for Royals confirmed. I saw it, Kristen. I'll take it. Mariners for Royals. Is that in, guys? Hang on, Pedro. I gotta put this trade in real quick. All right, Coach or Kristen, you tell me when it's closed. I guess. <laughs> One minute warning. Oh, you know what? I'm going to start you with the Ginter. Let's go with the not as cool stuff first. All right. All right, Pedro's number is 867. <laughs> What's that say? 53. That's 555. I'm actually not allowed to call Jenny anymore, so. <laughs> It's going to go straight to voicemail. <laughs> Pedro, it's Ben Smith from uh, Midwest Box Breaks. Hey, hey um, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Is that cool? Yeah, you probably want to. Okay, I have muted my laptop. All right, plus I'm, I'm real loud and annoying. So. <laughs> All right, I need to make sure I put this phone where they can't see your number. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, go ahead and say hi to our crew. Hey, what's up, everybody? Glad to be here, man. Can you guys hear Pedro okay? All right. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three. You got me? We'll find out here in a second. There's yeah. a little bit of delay. All right, they can hear you yeah. fine, Pedro. So you might hear what sounds like a sandstorm for a couple minutes as I try to open some packs. <laughs> you got a thousand people saying, "Hey, actually, it's more like 60. Um, I'm not that not that big yet. It's like watching something on ESPN eight, the Ocho. But uh, you might hear a little bit of noise. I'm gonna quietly open some packs while we do this. So no worries, man. And then you've got I'm good. you've got the cheating I'm Astros, and you don't have to tell me what you think about the Astros. But uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they cheated. Okay, so I'm gonna get. They admitted it, so there's no being pretty sure about it. They admitted. it. All right, so they can hear you pretty good. So um, I know a little bit about you. I don't know a ton. Um, do you want to tell me how you kind of got, tell me your collecting story, how you got into cards? Was a good place to you start? Know, I think it's probably what every kid my age did in the 60s. Um, I was born in 62. I lived in Detroit at, <laughs> at the time. My parents had arrived from Cuba in 62, and uh, I was born just a few weeks after they got here. And about a year later, um, we relocated to Detroit. There was more work up there for my father, and that's what uh, you know. That's what any family does. Sure. So um, the, the Tigers were my first ball club, and that's why I have a soft spot for them from my childhood. Um, and you know, going to the corner uh, package store, which is what they're called up there. Uh, you know, getting a dime, getting four dimes together and getting some baseball packs and sitting on the curb and can't wait to open them just like you're doing to see what you have and of course those came with that uh probably toxic bubble gum that was in there <laughs> yeah you can actually clean the bottom of a boat with some of that gum i don't know if people know that yeah. or not yeah and i'm sure there's still <laughs> you could probably still chew on it even to this day the amount of preservatives that were Probably in that thing. Um, I tried to chew on a piece that was about 30 years old. I think it was last year. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, it didn't didn't go well. But um, so your Al Kaline your favorite player? He was my guy as a kid because he was the best Tiger and he was you know the guy. But that whole '68 Tiger team, uh, you know, I can name everybody: Tom Castic, McAuliffe, Ray Euler, Don Work, freehand behind the plate. Northrop was the fourth outfielder. Uh, you had Horton, Stanley, K-Line, great pitching staff with McLean Lolich, Earl Wilson. Uh, you know, just uh, just a tremendous, tremendous club that um, won 104 games, I want to say, that year. Okay. Losing 3-1 to one to the Cards in the World Series and came back won the last three to win it all. Now, um, Denny McLean, for whatever reason, is attached to uh, Fort Wayne, the city where I live in Indiana. And uh, he frequents some of our card shows and whatnot, too. But, um, yeah, some of those guys, I don't know if it was because it was Detroit and it, they don't get the attention everybody does. But um, I've always, I, I used to go, obviously I didn't go this year, but I've been to a ton of Tigers-Yankees games. I went to the old stadium, went to the new stadium. Um, the new stadium downtown, I had a blast. We went and, uh, went to the casino and just downtown Detroit and um, had great seats. And I really like it there. I don't know how often you get to go back to Detroit, but... I was there quite a bit when the Tigers were kings of the AL Central because I was working. Yeah. And uh, I know that the city gets a bad rap, but man, I have uh, I, I love the city. Uh, I moved away when I was ten years old, so it's not like I'm that attached to it. Sure. But, uh, you know, it's 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 like anything. It's your first your first love is your first love of a baseball club, and that Tigers era club was. That was my club. I, I do not have a favorite club anymore. Uh -huh. You kind of grow detached because of the job. Uh -huh. um, I get that. So you, you, what, what happens is you kind of, you, you know, you, you might gain, uh, I don't want to say a friendship, but uh, an acquaintance level. Sometimes it can be around a friendship. And you just hope that good guys do well. So it doesn't really matter who wins to me. Um I do have a son who's playing minor league baseball, so okay. that, nice. that, that is my favorite baseball player. I, I will openly root for him without any <laughs> holding back anything on that one. And I'm sorry, what's his name? Uh, his name is Rio, R-I-L. Okay. He is in the, he is in, now you're not going to like him because he's in the Red Sox organization. That's <laughs> who drafted him out of the University of Arizona, and uh, so that's that's where he is. But you unfortunately... There was no season last season, last this past year. Okay. Do you know if he has any cards yet? He's not a card collector. He was a Pokemon card collector uh, at a certain age, and uh, well, him and his brother would collect Pokemon cards and, and play the game. But uh, he, he really was not a baseball card collector. I do have his minor league cards. That's what I'm asking. Has, you. Yeah. He uh, has those as well. Okay, that's what I'm asking you. Uh, what's he in, so we can try to find some? Uh, the last card he has, he, he finished. The last season he played, he finished in the Carolina League for the Salem Red Sox. But he got there at, in uh, May, and the cards had already been made. So he, the year that he has, 2019, he has Greenville Drive. And those are the cards that, uh, that he has, the last ones he had made. Okay, so Greenville, South Carolina? Correct. Yeah, I've been there a few times. League. So uh, I got a guy telling me he had a 2.2 ERA in uh, 2019. Yeah, and his career ERA is somewhere right in that. I think it's like two two five or two three zero in uh, his entire minor league <laughs> career. So he's put up good numbers. He's a left-handed pitcher, and as a scout, oh, he's yes. to make up. God didn't make I a lot of those. I know. Didn't going up or down. Well, um, that's pretty cool. And you know, I'll get over the Red Sox thing, but yeah, we'll kind of keep track of him and, <laughs> and cheer him on. That's awesome. So I guess you probably more root for individual players and guys you've met and kind of. If exactly, guys. Guys that I like, uh, like I think you're. Uh, oh, I thought that was going to be Arenado, the next guy. I thought it was a. I'm looking at you, Willie McCovey. I love Stretch. Stretch is a very. He was a very, very good guy, decent human being, just a fantastic person. Now you'll see in this product, you'll see a mix of new guys. You'll see a, a mix of retired guys. You're going to see some goofy stuff. This particular set that Tops puts out has like. Um, celebrities, uh, you'll see all kinds of strange stuff in here too. So, well, my son faced Nico Horner, and uh, when he was at Stanford, uh, hmm. and Randy Johnson, I covered when I worked at the Arizona Republic before at ESPN. I'm kind of going through. I've got to kind of sort these a little bit as I go through them here. So, Nico, yeah, yeah we've got. Yeah. Uh, we love Nico. Now, I'm in. Um, 
I'm in Fort Wayne. We have the Tin Caps, which is the minor league affiliate of the Padres. So yes. um, we've seen a lot of good guys come up. Before that, they belonged to the Twins. Um, Torrey Hunter, guys like that, uh, Brad Radke. Here's a Lester oh. Relic. This is for um, Mark. And then you might run a couple, maybe 20 seconds behind me, Pedro, as we do this. So. Oh, because you're – okay, so I'm, I'm saying guys that I'm looking at. Yeah. You've already gone through them. Yeah, but I'm, everybody else is seeing the same thing you're seeing. So, yeah, yeah see, well, this Max is – Scherzer, I mean, I knew him since he was in the minor leagues. Because, again, I, I used to work at the Arizona Republic before ESPN. Sure. So Phoenix pretty much home or just kind of where you set up camp? It, it has been for 23 years yeah. now. So, yeah, we raised our kids here. Um, so let's talk Hall of Fame. You got a take. You got somebody that you really, I don't know how much, because you've got a vote. I don't know how much. I do. I've had one. I've had one for 20 years now. Okay. This my 20th year, I should say. Um, so I, I'll be receiving the ballot, uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. And, uh, I, every year very much look forward to it. Um, I'm on the record that I do not vote for PED guys. Okay. Nor do I vote for people that uh, I strongly believed believe were PED guys. That's my own personal mm -hmm. belief. And people say, "How do you know?" And I said, "Well, I talk to teammates, to coaches, to managers, contemporaries, and that, that's how I draw my uh, sure my conclusions." And I'm sure it cuts a little deeper for you, being an old school fan too. And I'm sure with a lot of the guys too. And it's tough because those are the guys I grew up watching, but at the same time, you know, I'm a huge Don Mattingly fan. Mattingly, unless he gets in down the road on the Vets Committee or something, it'll be a different story. I, I've met him at a charity event and stuff. I love him, but, you know, I know he did it right and had trouble yes. staying healthy and stuff. And it just, you know, I, I saw McGuire and Palmero, their, their conferences and their hearings and stuff, and I think they just made it worse. I, I just I didn't like the way it was handled. Um, Bonds, I don't know. It's tough for me. I'm sure there are people who say let them all in, but um, it it's tough because you base it on raw numbers. But when you know what you know, it's kind of it's kind of rough. So, and I'm well, sure. In, in, you know, I mean, in a deposition, he admitted that he used. He said he didn't know what they were, but he did admit that he did use. Um, and it's hard to believe that he didn't know what he was putting in his base. body, but. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I don't. Do you feel like you? Do you feel like most people you talk to, your peers, are obviously the vote is what it is. I mean, you think they're in agreement with you, or there's really guys that are saying, "Hey, you know, let's move past oh, this." Oh God, no! I have I have really good friends of mine who uh, vote for all. Doesn't matter what they did. They could have been injecting in front of anybody that they would still vote for them. They just view them as the greatest players of that generation, which. In a lot of cases, they were, um, but to me, and it's, you know, everybody has their own personal opinion on how they vote in terms of the BBWAA. To me, once you do that, you have disqualified yourself sure. from, from being eligible. That doesn't mean that they're not getting in, because I think we know some have already been enshrined into Cooperstown, uh -huh. and others probably will. You know, that, that's the beauty. you got to get 75% of the vote to get in, and if, hey, if 75% of the electoral say yes, then they go in. So, I guess from what you've seen, do you think, I mean, how do you feel about the state of baseball in general? I, I see all the time people are upset with how they market their players, uh, what they do as a league, some of the decisions they make, and I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable spot, but I love I love baseball. I'll always love baseball. It'll always be my favorite sport. You know, I'm a football and basketball fan too. There's just something different about it, and I can kind of sense the disconnection because, and I've tried with my kids. I drove all the way to Yankee Stadium and, and took them to Yankees to Phillies, and just the way the culture is, I don't know. I think we're losing kids slowly year by year, and and it scares me a little bit because the attention span is, is so short sometimes, and I don't know. I'm not scared for the future of the game, but there are things that, I think the league could do to fix it, and I, I think they're just so out of touch sometimes that uh, I don't know. That's well, I think part of what part of what made the game so great for us growing up was the unpredictability of it all. 
And I believe that a lot of that is, is being stripped away from the game. And that's unfortunate because you go to watch Roberto Alomar make a phenomenal play that no other second baseman can make. And now the second baseman is either a fourth outfielder or he's playing shallow right field. And it's a what would have been a base hit, maybe a double in the gap, is now an out. Um, and I understand the bottom line is to win. But at what expense? And I think the expense right now is the beauty of the game, the raw, natural beauty of the game. And that is being taken away little by little with everything that has happened to the game in the last 10, 15 years. Sure. And to me, it's, it's just it's not the same game I grew up watching. I love the unpredictability. And that is being that, that has been slowly whittled away. Yeah, and I think for me it started with the strike. It started with the strike and then you know, some of the, the again the steroid stuff that came out and I don't know, it, it's it's tough to make a case for it when they they don't do enough in their own power to, to, to try to grow things and I love the game. I don't want to come off in a negative light. I mean it's I love the game. Yeah. I'm, 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 I want the game to succeed. I've always loved the game. It's been my the only sport I put at the highest level for me. I love other sports, don't get me wrong, but it has a special place for me at the very highest level. And um, I'm just afraid that it's 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 not the game isn't moving in the right direction to try to gain fans. You and I are going to be fans no matter what till right. the day we die. They're, they don't have to worry about us. But the game is not the same beautiful game it was, and that's that's what I fear, that they are not looking at the bigger picture of what they're doing with all the analytics and the shifting and, and the launch angle and the strikeouts and the walks. I mean, I covered the Padres Cardinals playoff game this year, and I, I remember tweeting about it. It was either 14 or 15 minutes before the first ball was put in play. Sure. In the game, and that's just wrong. That's wrong. That's not. That, you're not bringing anyone in to watch the game when that is happening. Now, if you disagree, go ahead. But you brought up the launch angle, and I, I don't care. I don't care what the launch. Angle, it does nothing oh, for I me. Don't either. Yeah, it drives me nuts. And I get. I guess I draw the line at some of the saber metrics and stuff like that. But yeah, you're right. The shift and some of the other stuff, and um, so, somebody wants me to ask you about Manford. I don't want to put you in that that position. But, um, well, look, Manfred, Manfred has uh, 30 bosses and 30 arms, and that's, that's who he's appealing to. Yeah, and I don't uh, I don't know how much you pay attention to Twitter. I know you've got a Twitter, but we had a funny run going there for a while where people just had things that Manfred, and then they put something on there that annoyed him, like Manfred gets in the pool with his shirt on, um, Manfred... Um, Ships good cards in a plain white envelope. It was it was a pretty funny <laughs> thread going there for a while. But now let me switch gears a little bit. Um, how much do you keep tabs on Cuban baseball? A couple guys asked about what Cuban players you looked up to or or admired or respected or anything. Oh my God! I mean, that, you know, when I was growing up, that's when the Cuban ball player was the top foreign player in the game before even Dominicans, and the Dominicans rose up. Once Cuba was sealed off, and those players stopped coming here, so but there were still plenty. I mean, Louis Tion, Tony Perez, Zolo Versailles, Tony Oliva, Tony Taylor, um, there, there, Tito Fuentes. There were so many great, great Cuban players that had played. Um, and then you know, go back even further, Camilo Pascual, whose son also went to the same high school with me and Ken Seiko. Uh, Bert Pasquale, he was in my homeroom. We, we're still friends to this day. Um, yeah, there, there was, I, I think a lot of people don't recognize or understand that before Cuba was sealed off by Castro, it was the Dominican Republic for Major League Baseball in terms of the foreign-born player, where the most came from. And of course, once Cuba got sealed off, the Dominicans uh, took over, and they've had, obviously, phenomenal, phenomenal players as well. But it would have been great to see other Cubans uh, who could have played here throughout the 70s, let's say, and 80s before the current influx of the the Cuban players who come now, like Puig or Cespedes or Abreu or Chapman. Um, 
but those those have all had to escape, risking their lives to do so, and that's just wrong. Now, obviously, I'm a big Yankee fan. I remember the story about El Duque, and then I was even more surprised to hear that. I mean, that's not uncommon. That I mean, to risk your life like that, to it, it just it, it floors me that a place can be, you know, set up like that. That that people want to you leave. So you don't have to risk your life in order to chase your your dream. Um, you know, Randy Rosarena was probably the brightest, one of the brightest stars of this postseason. Another another guy who had to risk his life in order to just have an opportunity to play Major League Baseball. It's, it's just unfortunate what has gone on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, people, a couple guys were asking about uh, Colas, where you thought he was going to sign. Yeah, I mean, you know, now with the international signing money, uh, you know, the limits, it's its not an unlimited pool the way it once was. So when a, when a guy like El Duque was available, the Yankees just pulled out the biggest checkbook and, and he was a Yankee. Um, I, uh, I, I I have not kept up with police that much to know what where he's leaning. But uh, I'm always, always anxious to see the next Cuban player get here because of my personal history of being Cuban. So sure. uh, it's it's wonderful when they come. It's sad that they have to risk their lives in order to have an opportunity. Yeah, it, uh, I can't I can't ima- I can't imagine it. And some of the stories and there's you know some of them are more well known than others, but it just it amazes me, you know, to put yourself in that position to risk I mean your life, literally your life. And um Guys in the chat here just mentioned a bunch of other, like uh, Puig story, and then of course um, Levon and El Duque. Yeah, I mean Leonis Martin is another one who had to come over basically on a you know a little eighteen foot boat across the Sea of Yucatan, uh, which is a good over a hundred miles in the open waters uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, you know, a storm comes up and that boat's tipping over and. That's it. You're done. I mean, Alex Fernandez, uh, not Alex, I'm sorry, Jose Fernandez, who came with his mother and jumped out of the raft in order to save his mother, who had fallen off the raft. Um, you know, I mean, uh, who knows where Jose Fernandez would rank right now in terms of star power in the major leagues, because he was on a trajectory, honestly, to be the face of the game. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's uh, I, I've got goosebumps. I've got goosebumps. That's uh, that's good stuff. So hey, I've got some good news for you. A little something. Uh, switch gears. Um, <laughs> we managed to land you an autographed card of uh, Al Kaline, so I'll be sending that to you. Oh my lord, I have a photo with him. Uh, that I, I listen. I, because of my job, I have to be professional, and sure. I can't ask people for anything. But yeah. uh. <laughs> Tigers are playing the A's in the 2013 ALDS. I see Al Kaline at the Oakland Coliseum, and I just I decided to go for it. And I said, you know, Al, I grew up in Detroit. You were my favorite player. I never ask anyone for a photograph. Yeah. Would you mind? And he could not have been kinder. That's great. And more nice. And it's one of my I, – I still treasure that photograph with me and Al. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I met uh, – uh, Don Mattingly charity event about three years ago, and it was a bucket list thing for me. And it just, it, it doesn't matter how old you are, you still, there's always that difference. They're still the player, and you're still the fan, and it, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, I'll be, um, I'll send in that with uh, with your cheaters cards, and uh, happy to send that to you. So pretty excited you about know, the it. The guy you just placed on there, Roberto Alomar. Yeah. I, I have said this before, that's the greatest player I have ever seen in my life. Really? It is. I know I didn't get to see Willie Mays in his heyday. I didn't get to see Mickey Mantle. Obviously, Gary, Ruth, none of those guys. Ty Cobb, I didn't get to see him. I'm talking about guys that I personally watched. Sure. Roberto Alomar is the greatest player I've ever seen. There was nothing he could not do on a ball field. Yeah, it was uh, – okay, so um, I asked this um, – I don't know if you know Tyler Kepner. Uh, of course. Yeah, he was – Tyler he, for decades. Yeah, he was on uh, last Monday, and uh, – we showed his book and everything, um, but I asked him, "Who do you think's kind of under the radar that people really aren't showing a lot of attention to that you think's going to be good coming up?" That we didn't see a lot of minor leaguers this year, except for the guys that they brought on the roster. But 
Who do you think's not getting enough? That's just sleeve only. Sorry. Yeah. Who do you think's not getting enough love? Uh, okay, so a guy like Juan Soto's already arrived, right? Mm -hmm. He's not. He wouldn't qualify as a under the radar guy. I'm guessing. Um, no. You know, I mean, uh, listen, the kid in Anaheim, Fletcher, is a very exciting, exciting player. I'm not saying he's Hall of Fame, but he is a very exciting player to watch. Um, I, I, you know, you're right. We didn't get to see minor league players this year, um, which which is unfortunate because that's where, you know, the next batch, so to speak, comes from. Um, I, I uh, boy, caught me a little off guard here. <laughs> Um, you know, the Padres have nice young, young guys coming up, but they're already kind of established sure. as well. So I think, I think guys are getting a lot more attention earlier too. Like everybody's, you know, Jason Dominguez and you know, it, it, they did it to Wander Franco and some of these other guys too. It, they're getting excited and hyped way before they even come up. So it's tougher now. So it's. It's not well, an and that doesn't mean you're going to make it. Yeah. It's just great to get excited about them. And what I've learned is a lot of times a club that wants to maybe trade someone will try to get people excited about someone that that club doesn't necessarily think has the real goods, yeah. but they want to try to elicit something bigger in a potential trade. So that's also something to be a little leery of sometimes. Yeah, my uh, my team, the Yankees, is uh, guilty of that. I think sometimes too. They've been accused of that of, of starting. <laughs> well, out. it's smart if you're if you're trying to create uh, interest in a certain player because you want to trade for someone. It's a smart thing to do. I remember John Sherholz, the uh, legendary Hall of Fame GM of the Braves, once telling me, "Andrew, you have to scout your team better than anybody scouts your team because." You need to make sure that whatever you have that you think is good is really good. And if not, it's okay for others to think that, and you can make trades. And when you think about the Braves under Sherhol's stewardship, I can only think of two trades they ever made where the player truly turned out to be someone. And one of them was, okay, Adam Wainwright, they listened. The Braves were making a run. They, they felt like if we had Teixeira, we can do it. And sure enough, that's, that's who... You know the club that that, that was, was holding out for, and you had to give up a guy like Wainwright. So okay, and the other one was Jermaine Dye. But if you think of anybody else, the Braves rarely, rarely gave up somebody that you ended up saying, "Man, what were they thinking?" And the, I think the Rays, to a large extent, are doing something very similar right now. The way that they trade for players that other clubs don't either value or see the true potential of. Yeah, and I think the opposite of that reminds me of um, the stat I saw, you know, when the Nats were in the World Series, just all the guys that came through the Tigers organization that, you know, you know, won at a high level with other teams after they left Detroit, and it's it's crazy when you think about it. Yeah, I I, I see the Rays in a in a different situation because they trade for minor league guys. You know, Scherzer, who got to the Nats, was already a Big time free agent by the time he became available, but um, you know Randy Rosarena, the Cardinals didn't, you know they, they didn't mind giving up on him. I, I during the entire American League playoffs of the nine starting players in the field, including the DH, only Brandon Lau and Kevin Kiermeyer were original draft picks. Everybody else came via trade. Yeah, Kiermeyer's from raised. Kiermeyer's from here in town in Fort Wayne. Yeah, and he yeah. was the thirty first pick, thirty first round, I should say. So it's not like he was a big time stud coming out, and everybody knew how good he was. They they developed him and you know helped make him what he became. Yeah. So um, Pedro, the, the original break we were in is over. I'm moving on to the next one. Uh, I'd love to talk to you for a little bit longer if, if you're good. If you've got somewhere you got to be, it's up to you. But uh, I know the guys are really enjoying this. So um, I guess I, I've got a little time. I, don't, I I'm, I feel like I'm talking too much though. I, I feel no. like you got stuff. No, 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 no. They're, these guys can see what's going on, and they've seen plenty. Of, you're, uh, we're excited to have you. So, so right now I'm just running the random for a triple threads, which is kind of a high end tops product. Um, we pull some really nice stuff out of here. Um, they're real collectible, and people like them. They're kind of the opposite of uh, the cards we were used to. And even me in the '80s, I started collecting them in the early '80s. You know, they put autographs on them and pieces of. You know, their jersey and pieces of base and their glove and 
helmet and all kinds of, you know, it's changed a lot. And I don't know how much, you say you haven't bought any cards in a while. A lot's changed. Um, not all of it good, but, um, yeah, back in the day when it was just tops and then you got Fleer and Donruss and, um, yeah, a lot has changed. But, uh, so I guess what's your, what's your favorite card? I know you've got some sets, but, um. Do you have something that I would say that the uh, the seventy one set because they started putting action photos in there much more so mm -hmm. than they ever had before, and that was always such an exciting thing when you opened up a pack and got Cesar Cedeno in action or something like that, um, and then it, it became much more over the course of the years in the seventies that they would include more action shots. When you see a, you know, a catfish hunter on the mound or Vita, um, Dick McAuliffe at the plate, uh, things like that. Those, those, that's when for me, the cards truly became um, more exciting in the sense that it wasn't just the stage. Hey, stand here next to the dugout at Yankee stadium, because we have to take every single photo yeah. at Yankee. Cause that's where our photographer is. What? And, uh, like it was middle school yeah. picture day. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And and just pretend like you're throwing a baseball or, you know, like you just swung the bat, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say like that 71 year when they started incorporating more action shots and then it really got more so. I remember getting the, uh, the, the World Series cards because they were action shots, mm -hmm. like 68, 69, 70. And that was always exciting because it was actual you know, game action photographs that you saw for the first time, for the most part. Um, they weren't really included prior to that, I think. Now, for me, um, and I, I'm only 45, so I wasn't around when these came out. But I'm 58. Yeah, so. I've, uh, I've always been uh, fascinated by the 55 Bowman ones, the, the first color TV. Um, oh, yes. And I, I picked up a, a, a Mantle card on eBay. And it was a little beat up. I got a good deal on it, but just something about because my mom told me about you know when they were kids and they got their first color TV and just the design and you know that was groundbreaking stuff a color TV and and I don't think we've ever seen anything like that in a set ever since. So no, I would agree with you. And, and you know my family being refugees from Cuba, we didn't have a color TV for a while. So uh, I think it was about 1971 when we got our first color TV, and I remember. It was just so enormous to get that. But I remember watching the moon landing in black and white. But, of course, everybody watched the moon landing yep. in black and white because there was no color back up on the moon. Yeah, that's uh, – it's uh, it's crazy that some of the things you take for granted when you think about it. And, you know, I think about when I was a kid, the first VCR and the first microwave we got and, you know, before cell phones. And my kids now um, – are teens and in their early 20s and they have no no idea you know what it was like to have to wait for the newspaper to see the stats from the game before and it's uh well there would be no mendoza line today yeah because the reason there is a mendoza line was the sunday paper had every major league average and he was always right at 200 yeah oh i didn't know it yeah it listed all those but i, yeah, I used to get in there and check check the yankee score and see how mattingly was doing um, let me give me a second here to say hi to a couple new people. Absolutely. Um, James Hearn, I think James Hearn's been in a break before. Welcome, Steve Marshall won the Pirates, won this spot and got the Pirates. Uh, Steve, not my best work. I apologize. Um, we don't have usually the Pirates are one of the teams they want to trade. But uh, all right, any any trades, coach? Did I miss anything? This is going to be seventeen, nineteen, and twenty tops triple threads. And archive snapshots. I apologize, guys. So when you make your trades, I just called it Threads Mixer. All right, Pedro. So um, you've been doing your job a long time. Um, obviously, you're good at it. Um, like 15 World Series, 10 All-Star Games. That, it's actually much more than that. I think that's what Wikipedia lasts. Oh, it's really? About, it's about 25 World Series now Okay. And 22 or 23 All-Star Games. You need to get in there and update that then. <laughs> Um, so what do you want to do next? Have you thought about that or are you, I mean, obviously you're happy with what you're doing, but I mean, if you thought about, uh, and I'm not going to say retirement, but I mean, have you thought about what the next step's going to be? I don't, uh, I apologize if I miss it. I, I see you on the ball games all the time, but 
you don't do a ton of regular, you know, studio TV, do you? Or, or yes? No, it's and especially now this year, it, uh, it it really cut down dramatically. Like I haven't been on a plane since February when I was uh, <laughs> sent home from Florida uh, for for COVID when the COVID pandemic started. So I was at spring training and I was sent home, and uh, it's it's. Uh, I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm extremely happy with what I'm doing. Sure. People say, well, what do you want to do next? It's like, I, listen, if this is what I do until I retire, which I don't know when that'll be, um, I'm, I'm more than thrilled beyond belief to get to do something that uh, I truly dreamed about as a child and to have it come to reality and fruition. I, I could not feel any more lucky in life. Uh, with what I've been able to accomplish professionally. Now that was the that was the takeaway from the interview with uh, Tyler Kepner last week too. That you know for him it was 15 years old, and that's rare to to find something like that so early and enjoy it. You know your most of your childhood and your entire adult life. So um, truly blessed for sure. So. Yeah, I think Tyler and I feel the same in the sense that uh, we have never worked a day in our lives. Yeah. And there's that's you're a, you're a lucky person when you get to say that. Yeah, that uh, it's rare because, um, I mean, I've certainly had jobs where I was like, "What the hell am I doing?" But um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully nobody from my work watches. But um, so I guess uh, so ESPN. Um, I remember. Yep, last one. Gotcha. I remember ESPN. Um, they had did they have Dragnet on when it first started? Oh, boy. I mean, it started in 79, so I was a... Uh, it was like early 80s, I thought. Yeah, I was in high school still in 79, so I can't tell you firsthand. I've been there 17 years, almost 18, so... Um, I mean, we've had television shows before. We had that one with the football team that the NFL kind of uh, <laughs> requested we stop doing because it was a little too close to reality. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, what the hell, um, what was that called? Um, I can't remember. There were eight episodes, and it was a really good show. Yeah. It was a very entertaining show, but uh, I, I, dang it, I'm sure somebody here will be able to remember what the show's name was. Um, we tweet it out, right, or uh, send it in, uh, in the chat right now. We just pulled but, a... Uh, Playmakers, there it is. Yeah, Playmakers. Rich, Rich knew it. Playmakers. We just pulled a uh, DJ, DJ LeMayhew for Mike Hirschberg. Uh, congrats, Mike. That's a nice card. Um, DJ LeMayhew, I, I asked him, when, when after he signed with the Yankees, I said, "So, what was the Rockies' final offer to you?" He said, "Nothing." Wow! I said, they didn't call and at least offer you like, "Hey, we can't give you much, but here's two million." He said, "Pedro, they never offered me anything." Wow! I'm sure they. Re I'm sure they regret that one. So one of the questions that was brought up too, and you know, we talk about our love of the game and stuff, and I've always respected teams like the Royals, the Pirates. Um, teams with a strong fan base and it's got to be frustrating for these some of these you know even the reds um these teams especially some of the ownership they can spend but won't and they just don't get out of i remember the pirates teams from the 90s those were great teams and i'm sure you know the economics of it has shifted a lot and stuff too but um i think for some of those people like just that comment there about lemayhew they just if guys won't spend it it's got to be frustrating, and I've never been in that spot, but I've well, seen... I will say this. Uh, you just saw Steve Cohen spend $2.45 billion for the New York Mets. If the sport wasn't making money, these rich guys who got rich by being smart and making money would not be getting and wanting to get into the game. Sure. So there, any owner that says we aren't making money is probably not being truthful. Yeah. Somebody just brought up the Indians not trying to keep Lindor. Yeah, yeah, and they traded Clevenger away. And I mean, look, they, they, they do have a great developmental system, and I think we've seen that play out with the amount of pitchers that have made it through their system. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I look, it's highly doubtful that Lindor will be there on opening day. Yeah. Highly doubtful. That's too bad. I've, I've been to Cleveland a lot, and I've seen a lot of games, and – the fans are nice. They treat you like family, even if you're with the other team. Here's a Thor relic. It says, always fast. That's the 27. Uh, Mets or Paul Gibbs? 
Um, and they've got to be frustrated because if, let's say I was rich, which I'm clear, clearly not, um, you know, I'd love to be involved in the ownership of a team like the Royals, the Pirates, the Reds. Uh, I don't know. It, it's so much has changed where, you know, year after year, some of those teams, it's just not going to be there. So it's, well, your window, and if your window does open up, you have to climb through very quickly the way the Royals did. Because look what's happened since the Royals went to those two World Series, which is amazing, by the way, that they were able to do that. Sure. And uh, it, it really is a testament to what Dayton Moore, the GM who learned at the feet of John Sherbels, who we were talking about earlier, uh, was able to accomplish in Kansas City. And um, but, but look, that window shut almost immediately. And now look where the Royals are. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I was going to, I got sidetracked a little bit, but um, ESPN. So when you first, I mean, who was the guy when you first uh, came to ESPN that kind of showed you around or was cool to you or kind of took you under the wing? Well, I, it's, it's, I'm in a different kind of uh, capacity because I'm what's called a bureau reporter. Okay. So I've never been stationed in Connecticut at, at our place. Okay. I, I only come in and out briefly and i'm only there briefly i'm not there very long if when i do go um so i've i've lived in phoenix the entire time and uh you know i'm the guy that okay let's go to the alds it's oakland and detroit here's pedro okay. in oakland or in detroit or, okay uh you know that type of thing so I'm, I'm what's called a bureau reporter and i have to be almost on call all the time and there have been some instances where i get a late call and i'm on a plane almost within two to three hours Wow. So yeah, it's um. So here's here's a uh, Pirates for Steve Garrett Cole to eighteen. So for anybody that was down on the Pirate spot, it's Cole. It's not the right team now. But um, okay. So I guess I get a little bit better idea how it works. Um, what's the what's the scariest place you've ever been? Oh, uh, oh boy. And I don't mean haunted house scary. I mean. No. Hey, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 un gotcha. uncomfortable because of, you know, the situation at the time, or? You know what? I had to go to Auburn when Cam Newton was under investigation, and it was an ESPN report, not mine, but it was an ESPN report that had made him ineligible, I think, for a game or so. Wow. And uh, that's uh, that was... Well, you know, having to do a stand-up shot before an Auburn football game there with uh, the tens of thousands of Auburn fans filing into the stadium, um, that that was uh, uncomfortable, I would say. With the things we were hearing, with what people said they wanted to do to us, um, it, it, it was not pleasant. Okay, so um, where was a place where it, it was just like, the land of Oz for you or Candyland where you couldn't believe you were lucky enough to, to get to do that. Um, I would say when I was a, before ESPN, I was a newspaper beat writer and I used to work in the Bay area during the Oakland days as a beat writer. And my very first trip to Tiger stadium, I was in Candyland because I'm, I'm not just at Tiger stadium. Where I went as a child. I'm on the field. I'm in the dugout where Al Kaline and Ty Cobb sat um, and Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, and I get to go into Sparky Anderson's office and he's sitting in there in ripped underwear and a ripped undershirt <laughs> and a pipe in his mouth. And I get to just have a conversation with him. And, you know, it got to the point because I had covered the A's for about six or seven years that uh, every time nice. we saw each other, he was very, very warm and welcoming to me. Um, you know, same thing with Luke Canella. I, I would say to me, any time that I step on the field at a major league ballpark, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world because it's almost like that scene from Fever Pitch where Jimmy Fallon asks Drew Barrymore about running in the outfield and asks, was it spongy? How did it feel? Yeah. Um, you know, I get to, I get to be on the field. So those, those are, those are incredible experiences for me. Yeah, that is, uh, that's pretty cool. And it goes back to, again, just being a fan of the game too. It, it's, uh, I love hearing that because I think we get so caught up in 
the business side of it, and I get that too, doing this kind of stuff too, but sometimes you stop and think, you know, around springtime I still get that itch to throw a ball and, you know, get out in the grass, and um, our, uh, our tin caps team, the Padres affiliate here in town, does some great stuff where, I mean, in the seats, it's just a great environment for baseball, and um, uh, we've actually, the president of the tin caps, Mike Nutter, has been on a lot, and I've talked to him and had lunch with him and stuff, but um, the effect it had on the city losing that, um, I mean, it hurt. It hurt deep, and um, I sure hope that we're going to have baseball again in the spring, the normal kind that we're used to, because I, I don't, you know, even the economic impact and just the social devastation and not having that uh, that outlet to, to relax and just enjoy baseball um, would no, be pretty yeah, frustrating. I, mean, I, I feel it from a personal level because of my son, so I, I absolutely, you know, he was told at spring training last year before it got shut down that he had a very good chance of being at Portland, Maine, which is the double A affiliate for the Red Sox. And, you know, once you, you, you keep ascending, there's, there's only, the, the, you, you have a chance to reach the, the top level, which is the big leagues. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to watch his career. And I don't know, I don't know if uh, he'll pass through here. It, it sounds like he's a little bit farther up than that, but um, this is, we're the single A affiliate. So, yeah, and the, the Red Sox, all of their minor league affiliates, whatever is left, they're all in the Eastern time zone. Yeah. They're in like the Sally League, the Carolina League, the Eastern League, the International League. So I don't I don't know that he would get to Indiana. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but you never know. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so Conseco, did you know him in school? Did you talk to him at all? Or you just happened to go to school at the same time? Or No, no, we yeah. knew each other. We were friends. Yeah, okay. We're still... We're still friends. We're still acquaintances. Uh, um, yeah, we, you know, it's, it's, it was a big school, but yet if you were part of the same kind of circle, you knew each other. Yeah. And yeah, Kenseiko and I were part of the same circle. So I, I've known Jose since he was in 10th grade because I'm one year older than him. Okay. So and I then, was in 11 when he was in 10th. And then Ozzy too, right? Yeah, he's Obi. Mozzie after he got drafted. His name was Osvaldo, but as a child, Jose couldn't say Osvaldo, so he, it came out as Obi. Okay. And this was pre-Star Wars, so it's not Obi Wan Kenobi. But <laughs> he was always he was Obi growing up, and then he got drafted. He became Ozzy. Yeah. Wow, that's a uh, that's pretty cool. I, I did not know that about Ozzy either. Um, yeah. Here's a Buster higher pick, higher pick than Jose, by the way. He was a second rounder. Jose was 15th. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, here's a posy nine of nine for uh, Eric Leggett. Congrats, Eric! Pulling some pretty nice cards out of here. Um, let's see what else do I have for you? I wrote down a couple things I wanted to ask you about. I talked to you about Kline. Uh, do you have anything going on? Anything you want to plug or anything? Um, I know on? I have a booth like Tyler. Yeah. Um, um, no, no, I'm just uh, I'm plugging along. I should say, uh, just seeing where where. You know where the world takes us all. All right, this is uh, Dansby Swanson to seventy-five uh, Braves. That is for Kevin Locke. Kevin's a newer guy, so congrats, Kevin. Nice, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll have to. I'll be sure to to give you a little mix of some different cards and give you something. Update your collection a little bit. I, I'm not going to be able to help you complete any <laughs> sets very, or very nice of you it's not necessary but thank you that's very oh nice no 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 i uh, appreciate your time you've been amazing and <laughs> i know the guys have enjoyed it too um here's a trevor story to 27 um what we do now the is the contract up next year for, for baseball yeah for the players uh, oh, the, yes, the CBA is up after the 2021 season, so okay. this is the final year. Um, they've gone in and opened it up, though, a couple of times, so there's certainly hope that they can come to some resolution uh, that would keep play from being interrupted. Um, but you know how it is. When big money is involved, uh, that that can all change. Now, and I had kind of heard, and it might have been on talk radio or something, that some of this stuff, the the dealings with uh, COVID and restarting the season and, and some of the back and forth may have damaged some of the relationships. I mean, are you seeing that too? Or 
Uh, well, it, it, yeah, there's no doubt that there was some damage done this past summer. Um, when when the owners said we're, we're willing to start the season whenever, and all of a sudden they just kept pushing and pushing and pushing it back. And uh, I think if, if you know if you remember, Trevor Bauer came out and said yep. it'll be a 60 game season because that's all they want. They don't want to spend more than that. Um, and sure enough, once it got to that point, it, things escalated and accelerated quickly so that there would be at least a 60 game season. COVID is going to, there's no doubt it's impacting the game. No fans in the stands. Uh, Owners, you know, whenever they can use something to limit pay, they will. And certainly this is one of those areas uh, where they can say, look, we're, we don't have people coming in the stands. We just don't have enough money to pay what we would normally pay. I think it'll be interesting to see how free agency goes this winter. Yeah, it's... I can't, uh, I can't do another strike, and I'm heavily invested in the future of the game, too, for how it, it trickles down into to this industry for cards. Yeah. And I guess I'm concerned. And the strike in uh, 94 sucked. I mean, there's yes. no other, yeah, there's, it's not good for anybody. But, um, yeah, I'm curious to see what happens. In, and just like the NFL, the money that has been lost from not having fans in the stands um, – it's crazy. My son, Jordan, who's watching, wants to know if this is the best interview you've ever done. And you don't have to answer that, but I wanted to make sure Jordan's <laughs> question got, got answered. It's been fun. I've, I've truly enjoyed it because it's it's not an interview. It's like we're just sitting yeah. at a bar having a conversation. That's the whole... And those, by the way, are the best interviews. That's the, kind of the whole premise of uh, what we do. It's supposed to be just a bunch of guys opening cards and shooting the breeze and... Um, so where do you like to travel that's not work related then if you guys go somewhere or take a vacation or yeah I mean this year is different because obviously yeah. uh, there's there's so many limits um, I, I would say probably one of my favorite places we've gone my wife and I has been to Ireland okay um, I absolutely loved going there that was a few years ago um, Italy as well was fabulous domestically um, you know, because of where we live, it's it's easy to get to Southern California. So it's about a five or six hour drive, okay. and uh, there's just a lot of beautiful spots in Southern California to go to, whether it be Ventura or Orange County or San Diego. There's just so much, so many great beaches to go to and beach towns, and just to, it's nice to get away. Uh, here within the state, love going up to Sedona going to Flagstaff, especially in the winter when it snows. Um, I think a lot of people think the whole state is 110 degrees all year round, and it's not. We get into the 30s even here in Phoenix in the winter. Um, really? We don't get snow. We don't get snow, but we do get down uh, into the 30s and 40s and 50s for a good chunk of the winter months. Um, and uh, it's, you know, just it, it's, it's great to be able to see other parts of the, the country and the world. Now, our, our buddy Phil Hughes lives in California, and he's always posting his pictures in the pool. You got any dirt on Phil Hughes that I can tell him, hey, I heard? Uh, I do not. Tyler would have been better for that one since he covered the Yankees more so. Yeah, he uh, And he's in New York. But uh, every time I've ever spoken to Phil, he's always been a very pleasant person. Yeah, he is a nice guy. So I've, got, I've got no dirt on him because there's <laughs> none. I don't have any because there's none he's ever shown me. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. We like him a lot. Um now, Ireland, um, I always see, like, travel packages. I'm a Notre Dame fan, so you can see the game in Ireland and whatnot. But to me, it just seems like nothing but rain. I don't know if it's just a stereotypical. <laughs> uh, no, it's gorgeous. And, and here's the thing with me. I can't really travel in the summer. So when my wife and I went, we went in November, um, which is not the high season by any means. But we still got to go to the Cliffs of Moher. And yes, it was cold, but it didn't matter. It was well, well worth it. Uh, we, we were in Dublin a few days, rented a car, and I'm driving on the other side of the street, and I'm driving a left-handed stick shift. So it was, uh, it was fun from that perspective to be able to do something that I don't get to do very often. Um, stick shift driving, number one, a manual transmission, which oh, I haven't done since I was you know, in my teens when I had my first car. 
and uh, and then to drive on the opposite side of the road was uh, definitely it, it keeps you on high alert at every moment. I'm out. I can't do a stick. I'm so I'm yeah. That's not going to work for me. I cannot do a stick. Now they do they still have the banshee or did they get rid of that? We did not see it, but it might have been because November. I don't know. <laughs> November things aren't as uh, it's not the high end, like I said. But we, yeah. we had just a fabulous, fabulous time. I would. Highly recommend it, and we plan to go back. Okay, my wife's always wanting to go someplace out of the country too, so maybe yeah. maybe we'll uh, we'll, well check. You're it already out. on the you know in the central time zone. You're closer than us. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a creature of habit. I I like to go where I'm <laughs> comfortable and know what I'm doing. And yeah, we were planning on going. I went to Yankee Stadium in uh, 2010. But she's never been to New York, and she's dying to go to New York. And we were going to go this year, and obviously everything got squashed with that. So, well, there's so much to do in New York. It's yeah, such a great city. It, uh, yeah, I went through that. I think it's the Lincoln Tunnel. I went through it like three times because my GPS stopped working, and it was. Um, I had a little bit of a panic attack because I was driving through it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We um, we'll probably go. As soon as stuff opens back up next year, I guess. But um, our national convention is in Chicago. Um, oh, that's a drive for you. That's, yeah, that's, that's about three hours. Yeah, not a big deal. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, same story as everybody else. A lot of cool things and, and plans got canceled. So. Yep, yeah. everyone. Now, does your wife work? She is a physical therapist. So okay. She, she works part-time. She works two to three days a week. And uh, she's been a PT... We've been married almost 30 years. Oh, congrats. The entire time. The entire time. Yeah, that's a normal question. I would just ask somebody if we were sitting here BSing over a, <laughs> over a beer. So. If we were sitting at a bar, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, this uh, this is, um, why can I not read it? Oh, it's Alex Reyes. This is for uh, Connie. We're in 17 triple threads right now for my members in my little clique, my break club draft room. All right, congrats, Connie. That's a pretty good card. Um, to, 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 to Upton. This is for the Tigers. Justin Upton to 36. Tigers, Jacob Rame. Congrats. So, I guess, um, what are you doing this time of year now? Just winter meeting type stuff? or? Well, they have those got postponed. Yeah. They're, they're going to have some of them virtually, but it's not the same as going and hanging out in the hotel and talking to executives and GMs and agents and you name it. So everything is upside down. I would have been at the GM meetings, the Major League Baseball owners meetings, but those have all been switched to virtual. Zoom uh, calls. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, I, I would have been getting ready to go to the, the GM and winter meetings right now. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it's, it's crazy how much the – some of the things and you don't realize until the time comes i think it's for anybody where you're like oh crap we can't do that this year you know yep. we've had several conversations about what we were going to do for thanksgiving this uh red Sox bogarts is for opeg mike congrats well uh with any hope we'll be back to normalcy for uh next season stephen piscotti one of the great stories. I don't know if you remember the home run he hit. And, um, oh, just the, the Cardinals being yeah. so accommodating to trade him to the Bay Area so he could be with his mother. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think some of those stories are the ones that don't get a ton of attention to. That um, There are some really good organizations out there and and will do anything for anybody. And Yeah, it was uh, – I don't get emotional too much about stuff like that. But, yeah, that was a big deal too. No doubt. No doubt. Um, Tom is asking me, what was the biggest scoop you can't believe you got? <laughs> um, I was working in Miami in 1994, I believe it was. And uh, I had a uh, someone from another organization call me and tell me, Mike Piazza is getting traded to the Marlins. And I said, yeah, right. <laughs> and sure enough, I did a little digging, and Mike Piazza was getting traded to the Marlins. 
Um, now he was only there a week or so, whatever yeah. it was. But uh, it, it was mind blowing. Like uh, the Marlins were not, you know, that type of organization. And to, to have a guy like Mike Piazza coming, even for just a few, a week and a half, whatever it was, ten days, was was incredible. And that that was like. I still can't believe that one. Yeah, I, as a Yankee fan, I don't know, Piazza always kind of bugged me a little bit. And then the whole World Series deal with uh, Clemens and the bat. and I don't know. I, I mean, I give him his props. He was a talented player, but just one of those guys that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And that's just a personal <laughs> opinion. Here's uh, Rowdy Tellez for uh, Captain Cali. This is to 75. Congrats, Captain Kelly. Um, I don't know. I know you you liked Alomar after the umpire thing. Alomar kind of yeah. I mean, that was you know. There's obviously two sides to every story. Yeah. And it's unfortunate of what happened. Um, but in terms of just a pure baseball player, sure. I've never seen anybody with the instincts that Roberto Alomar had on the field, and then the talent to back it up and to be able to do whatever he wanted and. Uh, just uh, again, just you know, it's a personal choice. Everyone gets to pick yeah. their favorite, uh, their their most talented player they've ever seen. And to me, uh, Roberto Alomar played a premium position, played it better than anybody has defensively, and uh, just just an incredible, incredible player. Yeah. Now, when I was a kid, I went to a uh, a lot of Reds games with my uncle. Um, and, you know, like Eric Davis, Barry Larkin, some of those yeah. guys for me. And, and I'm not a Reds fan, but I just remember those guys. Just They made it look so easy. Uh, here's Salvador Perez. This is uh, for Paul Gibbs. Another one of those Royals that just kind of, I don't know. I was Perez, Perez uh, Ben Zobrist, all those guys. That, it, was, it was a nice team. It was a good team. No, no, no. Eric Davis had, at the time, quickest bat speed in the game sure he just could hit anything and it came from just such a such a standstill to whack right through the zone and it was gone and it just he, he his bat speed was incredible incredible uh my first autograph was at that game uh, norm charlton one of the nasty boys <laughs> remember yeah, them of yeah yeah that was uh my first autograph and it was i mean i was shocked I, how old was i it was like 80 88 i think and, uh, yeah, I had no autographs my first one. I've still got it somewhere if I looked. It's funny, the stuff you remember. I remember it like it was yesterday. It is funny how that it elicits certain memories. There's no doubt about that. And you can you can kind of remember where you were and what. I remember watching uh, the 90 World Series Reds and A's over at my friend Kyle's house, big Reds fan, and we thought the A's were going to destroy them. And... Just what a crazy series. It just, you know, anything could happen, and then to sweep them, too, it was unreal. That, that, by the way, is the first World Series I ever took. Yeah. So you were, you missed uh, the earthquake by, let's see, how long was that? Uh, uh, one year. Yeah, one year. One year. year. Yeah. And I was, they, I'm sure they don't do it now, but you could watch, uh, you could watch World Series day games at school. I remember watching... 88 World Series? And... Well, our teacher in first grade allowed us to bring in transistor radios to hear the 68 World Series with the Cardinals and Tigers. Oh, boy. Hey, Pedro. So, look at very, your... little, very little got done that day at school uh, once the game started at, I think it was like 1 in the afternoon. So, Pedro, here in about 10 seconds, wait till you see uh, what I pulled you out of this. Uh, here's a Boba Shet, uh for Captain Cali, but uh, wait till you see. It should be coming up on your screen here in a second. This wow. is this is <laughs> ten wow. autographs and ten relics. Usually, it's a piece of their jersey or their bat. I've got uh, Dale Murphy, Tom Glavin, Maddox, Smoltz, McGriff, Chipper, Andrew Jones, Dave Justice, Acuna, and Freddie Freeman. Wow, that is sick. And that is for. Well, that's like the mother load. You, you <laughs> yeah, that's this is one of the biggest things you can pull. This is for uh, Josh Parkin, who's a newer guy. Oh, awesome, Josh! And this is numbered to. This is probably a one of one. Hang on, I don't know where the number is, Josh, but I'll find it. 
But uh, yeah, you see that on your screen now. I don't know if you're still. Wow. I see it. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. It's, uh, I, saw, I saw it from the moment you pulled it out. I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah. But, uh, so every once in a while, they basically connect all these cards together and make one big book, and that's a oh my that's gosh. a huge hit. That is amazing. Uh, so that is that is the mother load. Yeah, that's. I voted a, for Fred McGriff every year he was on the ballot. By the way. Really. Yep. This is um. I don't know if this is numbered. Hang on. Right there, bottom right. Oh, it's numbered to ten. There's ten of these that exist. So this is number ten of ten. So, um, who's a guy, uh, as far as the Hall, where, I mean, you really felt, Adam, you just, you believed in it strongly, and he's just not going to get enough votes, and you just don't think it's there. Well, McGriff is certainly one of those. Yeah. I, I truly, truly believe McGriff did belong in, and now his only opportunity would be to the Veterans Committee, or you know, whatever it's called now, the New Era Committee, the Today's Committee. Um, I vote for Omar Vizquel every year. Okay. And I, tru I truly believe that when I was watching him, I was watching the Hall of Famer. Uh, he has not really gotten the kind of traction that I feel he should. But again, it's, you know, you got to be on 75% of the ballots. And it's uh, to me, it's unfortunate that a guy like McGriff did not get in. And I, I almost feel like the, the steroid era is what prevented McGriff from getting in because he had 493 career home runs. Every single one of them clean, mm -hmm. but guys were hitting, you know, 50 and 60 a year when he was hitting 38, and when 38 would have normally led the league or been very close, and uh, it's almost like he got penalized for playing in that era. Yeah, I remember when 30 home runs was a big deal, and then it just got, I remember uh, Fielder, the year Fielder hit 51. Oh and, my God, that was, <laughs> yeah, the year George Foster hit 50 went over 50 that was enormous much like the year Cecil did but I think there was a year that Dick Allen led the American League of home runs with 32 so you know it wasn't always you didn't have to hit 50 Hank Aaron by the way never hit 50 home runs in his career yep ever now somebody just asked um what you think about Dale Murphy as because Dale Murphy was on that card uh, I'm, I'm also you know his only opportunity now I is through the Veterans Committee. But, uh, you know, Murphy was a tremendous, tremendous player. It almost feels like it hurt him that he was on those bad Braves teams for so many years. Sure. That that it just, and it should not, it should not, that should not affect you. Ernie Banks never got to the postseason. He certainly got in. Um, you know, Al Kaline got to the postseason twice in his career. He got in. Um, but but it, it just, I don't know. I, I've heard the argument that, that Murphy was a really, really good player, just not Hall of Fame. And, and hey, there's no shame in being a great player without ever getting into the Hall of Fame. There's no shame in that whatsoever. You know, the, the Hall of Fame truly is the top 1%. I mean, there's been almost 20,000 players that have ever played Major League Baseball. So you take uh, Wrigley Field and you fill it less than half, that's how many players have ever played Major League Baseball. And then when you think, that I, I want to say the number is around 220 that are, are in the Hall of Fame. So it's 1%. So it, it truly, you do have to be a remarkable, remarkable player to get in. Do you think some of those guys that get close but don't get in, how much do you think it bothers them? I mean, honestly. Oh, I, I, it does bother them. Okay. I will say this, though. Some people say, well, why didn't this guy get in on the first ballot? He had to wait till his seventh ballot or eighth ballot. Once you're in, I've never heard a player say, well, that guy only got in on his seventh ballot. Sure. That guy got in, you know. Once you're in, you're in. It doesn't matter what ballot you were on. So there is no extra anything for them because you're a first ballot guy compared to a fourth or sixth ballot guy. Now, I, a couple minutes ago, I thought I heard an alarm, Pedro. Is there somewhere? I know you're three hours behind us. Is there somewhere? If I'm keeping you. It's two. It's two. No, it's one. Aren't you central? I'm I'm eight thirty right now. I'm Eastern. Uh, and I am six thirty. We never change times here. Okay. So when the rest of the country changes, we stay the same. I don't know what happened, but it's Thanksgiving Day here, so I don't know. If we were, <laughs> some kind of wormhole. No, but I'm 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 good. I'm enjoying this. It's up to you. I don't want to, you know. I don't want to keep. Yeah, I, I got it. It's almost dinner time. Okay. Here, so I do have to run, but uh, I've enjoyed this. I, I really. did too. I'll, I'll make sure I 
all my guys too. They're gonna you're gonna see us on Twitter. You're gonna get tagged in some stuff. So that's um, fine. That's fine. I appreciate it. And then if you could, if you want to do it through um, uh, Joseph, aka Gino, or whatever you want to do, I'd like to send you some stuff. So if I could get an address or even a yeah. business address or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, sir, I cannot thank you enough. It's been one of the highlights of of doing this in the last couple of years. So I appreciate your time and uh, continued success and enjoy the game. Well, likewise, man. Thank you for the invitation, and uh, hello to everybody. Have a great night, everyone. Hey, thanks again, Pedro. I really appreciate it. Okay. Okay, man. Take care. See ya. That was just awesome. How about that, guys? Over an hour. Over an hour. Uh, there's a book in there, so yeah, oh you just, yeah, I just skip it. Sick <laughs> hey, we're going to send that book, Park, and we're going to send that book PWE. Is that okay? <laughs> Hey, let me see that real quick. Sure. Guys, let me get a picture of that book. You need, what, six stands <laughs> to put that thing on? I'm going to get a picture of the book, and then we'll do the Discord member appreciation break. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty cool, guys. Oh, uh, he's a wow. super nice guy. Super nice guy. Should I just chip the hell out of it? I don't mean literally <laughs> chip it, but I mean... Poker chips. Guys, that was a lot of fun. Thank you. Some great questions. Mm. I apologize to anybody that didn't get their question answered. Um, some of it I didn't know if you That's were a beaut. trying to be funny or, or what, but make sure it's landscape. <laughs> you may have to. <laughs> Son of a... Yeah. All right, hang on. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Panoramic, yes. <laughs> Screw it. I don't want to see people see my proprietary setup. Yeah, that's not the worst thing. You know what? Hang on. I got a better idea. Discord member appreciation break is next. Oh, there you go. Just so you guys know, I am wearing pants. <laughs> hey, but uh, Pedro was freaking awesome, man. That was awesome. I've never seen a book that, that big with so much on it. Kendrick said he's never read a book before. Never. That's read, that's, yeah, that's more pages than any book I've ever read. <laughs> man, Parkin hit the mother load on yes, this. Yes, he did. But he's glad he got, got into breaks here not, not too long ago. All right, uh, pa, 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 pa. hang on, guys. Oh, is it a trade? How he ended up with him? Wow. Hey, Scott, how we doing? Did you guys see the Kershaw? I forget who the Kershaw was for. That was pretty cool, too. You know, he's right. It wasn't an interview. It was just Jordan. some dudes. The only thing missing was some beverages. Jordan says, I need more FaceTime. <laughs> oh, hey, don't worry. I got a job to do, Jordan. Jordan's, or Kendrick's getting his, his time. Oh, yeah. Okay, Discord member appreciation break. Yeah, guys, I thoroughly enjoyed that. You can tell when somebody really loves baseball. Um, Jordan, uh, Kedrick's religion doesn't allow him to be on TV for more than a second or so. Only the right-hand side of my face. Yeah. That's the issue. All right, this was basically a break at cost, guys. I had some stuff I wanted to clean up. So I gave you a cheapish break. As always, you guys were well behaved. Well behaved. All right, 46 people still watching. So who's next? Yeah, I wouldn't DM the hell out of him and get blocked, but you guys can tag him and stuff. Okay, so one thing I added late to this 
was the silver packs out of the Tops update I gave you guys away in the um, October member drawing as we were busting these open and handing out packs. Kendrick's like, what are you doing with these packs? I'm like, oh crap, I don't know. So, Oh yeah, he was very, I mean an hour, an hour. Again, the running theme guys, doing something you love. It doesn't even feel like work. My wife asked me all the time, do you realize how much time you spend in the, quote, break lab? It does not even feel like work. Here's a Kershaw. Dave's going to get a restraining order put out on himself. Dave said, I want to make him a fruitcake with his face on it and mail it to him. Can I get the address? No, you cannot. Dave says, would he care if I got a tramp stamp tattoo of his face on my back? Do not do it, Dave. Are you talking about me now? No. Talking about Diamond Dave. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't do it, Dave. Nobody wants that. All right, snapshots, guys, snapshots. See you, Tom. I'm worried Tom's going to drive to Phoenix and make him go to a show with him. That was a good time. That was a good time. Oh, be sure to thank uh, Joseph, Gino, uh, goat jerseys. That's another killer uh, guest he got for us. Oh, this is a nice pack. Yeah, corners are... Guys, the corners are pretty much trash on these. Yikes. Urkity is your auto. Ooh. Bad, bad corners. Whoa, it's like bad corners. Bad corners are what I see. Astros, Connor D. Who keeps moving on me so I can't find him. See, Joseph. Yeah, nice job, dude. Gino. Nice job. We won't do a recap on this, guys. It was Bon Jovi. No recap on this. See you, Jordan. See you, Braxton. Boy, Mays. Hunter Harvey. That's number to 10. Aquino. Robert. Karen Chack. Karen Chack, baby. Soto. All right, guys. Tops rip cards. Yeah, work on getting my grandkid on YouTube. All right. What do you want to do about these rip cards, guys? Are we ripping them? Beltre. Rangers, that's for Gabby. Cardinals, Paul Gibbs. Alonzo to 50. That's for Captain Cali. And Chapman to 25. Anybody here? CJ, are you here? Anybody here want to rip their card? Anybody here want to rip? So we're, are we making it a mandatory rip? I don't know. We should have covered this in the rules. I know I'm scared. Libby told me they're a pain to rip, too. Libby's the one that sold these to me. You're supposed to rip them, Chris. 
right down the center. I'm scared. What if? What if you guys don't want me to rip them? Brooks Robinson, Joey Gallo, Glaber, Ted Williams. Anybody? Um, Colby, Cap or Charlie, Gabby, Jen McKenna. Anybody want them ripped that I'm reading off? CJ. Yeah, I don't want to rip them. I'm not gonna rip them. Send your hate mail to at Ked Kaboom. Oh, Charlie says I can rip Glaber. Alright, we'll be this will be the guinea guinea pig. Alright, Charlie, here we go. Colby says rip Ted Williams. Or is that rest in peace? Are you saying rip it or rest in peace? Here we go. What's up, Chaos? Chaos, I just had Pedro Gomez on from ESPN. All right, inside it is... Wow, these are not easy. Before we break live, I always have to hide my box cutters because of Kedrick. All right, hang on. There's an Acuna in it, number to 40. That's as deep as I'm going to get. Acuna, number to 40. What's up, dude? Everybody say hi to my friend Chaos. All right, uh, Ted Williams, Teddy Ball Game, the Splendid Splinter. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. It uh, it goes to the person that had the rip card. Now we've never done that. The card inside goes to the like this is Red Sox, no matter what's inside it. I've never, I've never given them to uh, the owner on the card inside. Yeah, that's not right. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Bo Bichette to 25. Bichette to 25. Yeah, Dave, are you messing with me? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Jen said go ahead and rip Brooks Robinson. God bless you, please. Brooks rip Robinson. Inside is probably John Means. Hey, hey, hey. It's signed. Ronald Acuna. I can see it plain as day. You got it right here in front of me. Nine times. Jen, I'll be honest. I'm terrified to go any farther. If I take it out, I gotta give it to David Diaz. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> this is scary. I haven't been this intimidated since the first time I unsnapped a brawl, I'll be honest. Acuna to 25. I'm waiting for your nose to turn red like the game operation. You're yeah. going to hit the side. <laughs> All right. Was anybody else here that wanted to see that happen?
Guys, as we become more and more friends and get to know each other better, I'm going to clue you in on a lot of things that will answer the question, what the hell's wrong with Ben? You're going to, especially if you hang out with me at National. Anybody else want it ripped? Yeah. You are no longer an Orioles fan. You just ripped a Brooks Robinson in half. Anybody else? All right, let's get... Let's get this out of the way. And after this is tribute. What's up, Travis? Otani to 199. Vikings are up 7 3. Yeah, be sure to tag Pedro and thank him. Vote for Pedro. It's a different Pedro, guys. <laughs> Super nice guy. Oh, coach doesn't want to know the score. Dave is gonna Diamond Dave is gonna do the sad astronaut and load up a bunch of adult diapers and drive nonstop and show up. Guys, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Now I've got his phone number, so I'll just... Tomorrow I'll be like, hey, what's up? What you doing? I would not do that. It was probably a burner phone. Break Clubbers, thanks for being awesome. Oh, I'm not. I don't know, Coach. Bear down. Longest I've ever driven nonstop is to New York, and I think that took me 10 hours. I've had a couple quick round trippers, like I played in a poker tournament down in uh, southern Indiana, where I played... Drove five hours, got knocked out, just said screw it, drove five hours home. And then the Mattingly thing, I drove like nine hours round trip. I was only there for a couple hours. Alright, this one will not be entertaining, so we'll figure... See how fast I can move through it. Acuna Auto, that was pretty cool. Lorenzo Kane Brewers. That's for Brad Peterson. Nice job getting those uh, triple threads filled today, too, guys. Nice job. Grisham. Remember, I've got to kind of prep these for Ked Kaboom so he knows what to do to them. Griffey. You know, a lot of those um, guys with a vote are secretive or just kind of close to the vest as far as like their Hall of Fame votes and how they feel about certain things, but he was pretty open and honest with us. I don't know that you get that out of everybody. Because, I mean, let's let's be honest. We've, uh, we've seen some people get destroyed over their Hall of Fame ballot and uh, just some of their takes on stuff. Mount Castle. You always have the guy that won't let somebody get in unanimously that has to not vote for him. 
Bo Bichette. I need to get a better picture of that book, don't I? Oh, yeah. He loves these upside-down parallels. Aquino. Trout. Kyle Farmer. Kyle Farmer. Yeah. I mean, he didn't come out and say it, but yeah, he didn't vote for A-Rod. I mean, it's his vote. I, I see it. A-Rod's not innocent. We won't do a recap on this, guys, if the moose out front didn't tie it. So Pedro and the Conseco brothers. That's kind of cool. Evan White. Randy Rosarina. Twenty years of the captain. Mm. Guys, we pulled some heat. Lost in all the excitement was the fact that we pulled some freaking heat tonight. That card's better than any one of one I've seen. Oh boy, yeah. If I was a Braves fan. Oh my gosh. First of all, if I was a Braves fan, I'd be about mad about. 96 and 98, but other than that. All right, it's uh, uh, Oh, I'm putting on my base <laughs> here. Hang on. Are you caught caught up to me? Yeah. Okay. They're actually That's all, all sorted already. That's all base. Except for Ginner. Except for Ginner. Oh, so you're not. <laughs> Here. It's all taped and loaded, but it's not sorted yet. Everything else. Munson. Is so this is all base. Yeah. yeah. This is base too, right? No. No, it's not. All right. Yeah, I'm leaving all the. Oh, you still have one more box, don't you? Yeah. All right. I'll get a white box for it. Nothing. Trout. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. I'm a huge baseball person. I was getting goosebumps on some of the stories, too. You might be having a stroke. <laughs> Kyle Lewis. Polar Bear. McCovey. Hi, Robert Wagner. Robert Wagner. Alright. This last one is base, too. Gotcha. I think both these are loads. I'm almost done with this box. Yeah, we're more box. Adam, I don't know. It might be you. You want to call in, Adam, and talk to us? You guys want to start doing that where we let somebody... Here's a Tatis short print. I remember when Tom and uh, Kristen called in. Yeah. You guys want to start doing that? Have somebody call in? If nobody calls in, you're stuck with me as being the next guest. <laughs> Call in. We get to know you a little bit. Make it your week. We could do that in Discord, too. Kristen likes having a week all to herself. Or we just make it all about you. <laughs> Adam, everybody is exciting. There's some bass. Yeah. Call in. Tell us your story. Like that. We're not doing terrible on time. What do I have not left? Alone. Three breaks left? Yeah. No. Yeah, two, yeah, three. Musial.
Good. Glaber. Here, I'm almost done with this. You want to take this with you? Sure. Acuna. No, I get, there's still more in there. Go ahead and put it in the box if you want. There's no... Okay, I see. Alvarez. All right, next is Tribute, guys. Thank you for buying into this break. It helped me clean up. I've been hanging on that uh, box of Tribute forever, so hopefully there's some heat in it. The circle will be complete if Pedro follows me. The circle will be complete. All right, good luck, man. That went. That was over an hour. It just you lose track of time. Thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, guys, here we go. Maybe we'll do that. We'll vote on who we want to talk to. We'll do it in Discord. We'll pick who we want. Harper, Brendan McKay to 99. Verlander. Rays, Chris K. Sino. So if we vote it, man, that's kind of like either a Hall of Fame or a Guest of Shame. One of the two. <laughs> Bellinger. David Cohn. Yankees, David Cohn. 199. That is for Charlie. Charlie! Charlie got a Coney. Ooh-ah. Mattingly. Ooh. I think so. Garrett Cole. Lindor to 50. Nice. Indians, Dave Knox. Dave Knox blocks. Lindor to 50. You guys want me to call in and answer questions one day? Mets Coney, not as cool. About three minutes in, remember Dieter on Sprockets on Saturday Night Live? Your story has become tiresome. Mm -hmm. Wade Boggs, Ray's Wade Boggs, not recognized at Midwest Box Breaks. We only recognize Yankees, Wade Boggs. Ray's Chris Casino. Pete Alonzo. After this is Phoenix, guys. Phoenix football. Wagner. Bregman, 150. Gwynn. Then we gave him the cheating frickin' Astros. I should have kept my mouth shut about Alomar. I couldn't help it. That was my one mistake. Rizzo, 150. LeMayhew at 50. Mike, I'm going to say probably not. Where are you at, Mike? You might not be live. All right. Next up is Phoenix, guys. That was in there. That was in there. Um. All right, 
kit. So you're going to have. Those are both loaded and those are sleeved. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. Two stacks to load and one just to sleeve. Here you go. Thanks. You look nice today if nobody told you. Yeah, you too. All right, Phoenix, two box random, and then Illusions Division, and then clearly tiered. Let's wrap this night up. Um, I've got one box of Phoenix left. If you guys missed that interview, too, we probably shouldn't even call it an interview. If you missed it, it'll upload to YouTube after, so. I've got another box of Phoenix. I think I'm going to break it up on loop. I've got one left. I'll probably rip that tomorrow as packs. Can't find me cursor. Here we go. I'll be honest, I've never talked to somebody about cards and baseball for an hour and not had them fake some kind of medical emergency. That was uh, rewarding. And not the eye roll I get from coworkers when you talk about cards. I had somebody laugh out loud at me today. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Uh, N U F O F P. I mean, obviously, I'm killing it. I got my own kid kaboom. All right, top spot, Kedrick will clean your house on Sunday. We'll drive your house to clean it, whoever gets the top spot. I'm talking about next Sunday that we're not shipping. Good luck, guys. For an extra 10 bucks, he will wear a French maid outfit. Kristen Ked wants to clean your house. <laughs> this place, man, I tell ya. A G Z Q V I. Oh, also, we're hooking up. Ken, um, Kristen, what are you going to want for that K-line? we got to work out a deal. Trades are open. She just put it on eBay for $800. Buy it now. Um, Deafness has the Cardinals. Going by his government name. Deafness has the Cardinals. Tom Doyle, Bears, Justin Enright, Matt Larson was in something last week. Deafness also has my Niners. Uh, Jordan Helmer, welcome. The whole point of the black background was for me to be able to see it. Wow, Deafness tore this thing up. Dave Knox, uh, Fred was in something. No, I just talked to Fred on Twitter this week. Talked to a lot of new people. Steve Wetz Jr., welcome all you newbies. Yeah, let's, Kristen, please send that to me as soon as you can. Just plan on me getting it. We'll work out the details. All right, so for you newbies, this is your trade window. Trades are open. If you want to try to trade with somebody, you only have a, a minute or two. 
Um, all cards ship, so every card you see for your team goes to you, and new people will get something extra in their first mail day. If for some reason you pull no cards for your team, I'm still going to send you something. So even if you see nothing, if you see like one or two base cards, I'm still going to add something. But if this is your first break, you are guaranteed a mail day. And if you didn't use a coupon this time, the next time you get in, tell me and I'll give you a coupon. Save you some money. One minute. Deafness was here earlier. I'm going to bust out both boxes, guys. No, just do it regular, Kristen. A couple days is fine. I'll cover the shipping, too. Don't spend a ton of money. Just a couple days or whatever the heck it is. Priority. Oh, slidey packs. Yep. I will hook you up, guys. Deafness, tell me if you're here. If not, I'm going to message you. Uh. Anything, guys? Uh, Kristen, either or. Either or is fine with me. I do want to become famous. Thank you. Thank you for sending me that. Dave wants to trade his Patriots. We don't have time for Patriot games. I don't think I ever saw that movie. After this is Illusions Division and then Clearly Authentic. Clearly Donner's Basketball. I anticipate being done here. I don't know, by the top of the hour for sure. got coach what if coach called in one night that would be entertaining what if me and coach and Kedrick go to dinner and Kedrick records it all right here we go Kelsey cam Akers 199 DJ Moore hot routes Patrick Queen, Rogers, Minshew. Here's your first Tua. That's the 175 Dolphins. Coach, you want to go to dinner? This is for Richard Gap. Change my mind on some of these. Uh, Queen and Kelsey. All right. Aaron Jones. Hasty. Lamar Jackson. They were beating Lamar up pretty bad today on Sports Talk Radio. 
Michael Thomas to 75. Herbert, rookie rising. Not numbered. For some reason, my left eye is just burning like crazy. Chris Lemaster. Loop tomorrow, guys. 7 p.m. is what I'm thinking. Personal boxes, mini boxes. Packs, personal packs. Honestly, whatever your heart desires. Perrine, Mahomes, Bosa to 299, Prescott, Peoples Jones, Hightower, not Hightower from Police Academy, guys. Uh, Jerry Judy, Judy to 299, Justin Jefferson, Evans. Darrington Evans is in every break. All right, we have a Kedrick, so he'll sleeve and load all these good ones. A.J. Brown, Titans suck. Gilmore, Waller. We'll Waller that out for you real good. That's a 149. Aaron Rodgers, Flamethrowers. Jefferson. Danny Dimes. Danny Dimes can't decide if he wants to be good or not. This is a 149. Antonio Gibson, a 50. Huge patch. Huge patch. Akers, Baker, Mims to 149. AJ Brown, Hot Routes, Epinesa, Tyler Boyd, Colin Johnson, Minshew, Flamethrower. That's the 75. Jerry Rice, Fire Forged. Alshon Jeffrey, 199. Claypool, a 99. Go Irish. Ooh. Look at that. Gloves. Steelers. Parking again, man. Be parking in front of the lottery office here pretty soon. Well done, my friend. I said my friend because I'm hoping he'll give me that Braves book. I'm just kidding. I like Josh. So Yankees book would be a different story. That would never leave the break lab. Yeah, I would find a way. I would find a way. Love will find a way. KJ Hamler. To 10 for the Broncos. Michael Vick. Trubisky. <laughs> Rieger. 299. Donovan Peoples Jones. 99. That's for the Browns. Deafness. That is for deafness. Donovan Peoples Court. Congratulations. This dude. That's all you're going to get out of me, this dude. Uh, this guy used to be a decent breaker, but it just seems like he's kind of mailing it in on some stuff. Well, you got to be realistic. You can only have... I mean, we're talking... If I can only get 10 on there, the ones I've seen have never had the old school guys on it in a book. Okay, we had three hits in that first box. Cherry says Judy. Oh, that's good.
Guys, I will likely send out a thank you tweet to Mr. Gomez that I'm out. I need to crash. Did not sleep well. Anything on the site that fills can rip Wednesday. And uh, we got a bunch of breaks right now in the 20s. Brady Bucks Uni, Adams, Hot Routes, Rieger, 149, Julio Jones, Hamler, Stanley to 299, Ruggs, Rookie Rising, Tyrod Taylor to 99, Tannehill Flamethrower, Jordan Love, Julio Jones to 299, Waller, Hot Routes, Henderson, Patrick Mahomes, flamethrowers to 25. Mahomes to 25. Uh, Mark, I don't remember. I don't, there wasn't any. We'll do a recap here in a second, dude. There was not any Texans. Chris Carson to 25. 35. Chris Carson at 35. Three color patch. Sea Chickens. New guy Steve. Congrats, Steve. All card ship. New people get something extra. If they completely strike out, they'll still get a mail day. Herbert to 199. That's for LeMaster. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, Moss, Clyde Edwards Alaire, Tucker, Watson, Cole Komet, Nick Bosa to 175. AJ Dillon, 149. Pack attack. AJ Dillon, Packers. I really thought the Jags were going to beat them yesterday. That's for Hitman Don. Hitman Don. Congrats, Don. Secret Santa is rolling in Discord. 130 participants, I believe. I get that number right, 130. Jason Huntley. That's to 99. Lions, Michael Thomas, hot route. Eason. Thaddeus Moss to 149. Jordan Brooks. Seahawks again. Ayuk, I think that's the color rush. Josh Allen, 199. Tua. Tua is not numbered, flamethrowers. That is Moss. Jimmy Garoppolo is about done. That's a 149. Hot Routes, Devontae Parker. Never change your picks. That is true. You guys can also buy brake credit. It's kind of like buying a Hot Wheels when we were kids. It's an easy way out. If you're struggling, you can buy brake credit. That's an option we uh, offered last year. If you just can't find your way out of the house or for whatever reason, if uh, that works for you, just get them break credit. Um, break Club Special, 
Coach and I will have to set it up, but I'll do 30 bucks worth of break credit for 25 bucks. 30 bucks worth of break credit for 25 bucks if that's the route you want to go. I got to find a way to do it organized. Don't tell me now. Give me some time to set it up. But I'll do 30 bucks of break credit for 25. Um, try first, see what's out there. But some people don't do shows. Um, there's going to be more people than you think. Um, break credit's going to be an option for them. So it's not a slam, it's not a slight. Um, I mean, we've got guys out in the middle of nowhere. Or eBay screws you at the last minute or something. So keep that in mind. Illusions Division is next. Can I just set it over on the table? It's cool for now. What's that? Yeah. Alright, this is Illusions Division number three, I believe. Is that a base over there? What? Yeah, there's, you want, he's finished some base over there. Yeah. Okay. Just base, then sleeve, then load. Yeah. Yeah. And if you already know, you're not going to be able to find anything. It's totally cool. All right, after this is clearly Donner's basketball, guys. Here's your division. I'm going to move a little faster. Uh, Josh Parker Kedrick said he cut the book up so he'd be able to um, top sleep, load them all. top load all the cards. M B E D S U. That would honestly suck. That's the biggest hit we've ever pulled with a guest on. All right, good luck to Mike. Hopefully that's Rogers and not Rogers' son, Charlie, Jared. New guy, Mike Haffey, Eric Rothdiner, Jordan Poole, Tom Doyle. Jordan and Tom are new. I think Jordan's been in something before. And then Colby. So good luck. A couple new people taking a ch chance on a division break. Same thing applies, guys. Even if you completely skunk, you're going to get a mail day. We'll give you a hot minute to make your trades. I'm getting sleepy. W O I X P P. Trades are open. Let's be quick about it if we can. Anybody here that's in this break? NFC East. All you gotta do is show up. You might win that division, Colby. Anything? If not, we can rip.
All right, Eric's here. Anybody trying to trade? What's up, Jordan? Yeah, Deftness, you just missed it. I messaged you. Sorry, brother. Sent you a little DM. All right, I'm ready to close it, Coach, if you are. All right, come at Donovan People's Court to one ninety nine. Browns AFC North. That's for Mike Rogers. Metcalf clear shots. Sea chickens. Breeze Fuller Dylan Golf to seventy five. Jalen Hurts. NFC East, Baker, Woods, A.J. Dillon, Van Jefferson, huge blue patch, that's for the Rams, that's NFC West, um, that is for Charlie, Brett Favre, NFC North, that's to 399, Beckham, Roethlisberger, Hopkins, Russell Wilson, 499, Marino, AFC East, Khalil Mack, Garoppolo, Sleeve Your Hurts, Evans, McFarland 499, Drew Brees, in some pain right now, Teddy Dishwater, Bosa, Joe Burrow, AFC North, that's for Mike, Minshew 399, Khalil Mack 149, Tannehill, Chubb, Brady, DeVernay to 299, AFC North, Take care of your burrow here while I'm at it. Happy birthday to our buddy Mark in Discord. T. Higgins, Fournette, Gurley, Morgan, CeeDee Lamb to 199, Brady. Cousins, A.J. Brown, Chase Young, Lamar Jackson, AFC North again, that's for Mike, J.J. Watt, that is to 299, Watson, Barkley, Farland, Ruggs, Peyton Manning, Wentz, Thielen Groovy. Did you guys check out on me? What are we down to? 25, yeah. All right. Lamar, DeVernay, Rams, Browns. AFC North crushed it. Let's see what this is. Show me a Tua. Lance Briggs to 75. NFC North, Jordan Poole, Lance Briggs to 75. Yep, thanks, Rich. Appreciate you. Thanks for the support, sir.
All right. Jordan, we could probably help you unload that bear's hit if you uh, want to get rid of it. So, Okay, next up is uh, clearly Donruss, number three, I believe. It is, tiered three. Yeah, I may know a guy. Angry as Chad is a big Bears fan. That's about the only one I know, besides people at work. All right, here we go. Tier 1. Good luck to Kevin, Mike, Don, Tom, Captain Kelly, Dave, Hirschberg, Adam, and the Blair Witch. You guys like this break? My last two boxes of Clearly Donruss are on the site right now. Take another stab at it. We could be ripping it Wednesday. Those are my last two, and then we're done, I think. I don't think we're going to do it again. Basketball is going to start climbing again as the season approaches. And we've had a nice run with it. KPW TGI. Saw some uh, NBA trades today. Suns making moves. Give me an opportunity to say shut up about the Sun. SCPQHP. Big thanks to Pedro. Coach for all his hard work today. Aaron. Aaron crushed that secret Santa. Guys, don't be the one. There's been one person in the history of our secret Santa that uh, hosed us. And uh, I fried him on Twitter. I was not happy. I mean, we lit him up like a Christmas tree and had to force him to settle up months later. Don't be that guy. I'm happy to bail you out if I need to. NSHWAG. Obviously, that clown's no longer in the group, too, so. All right, good luck, guys. I'm going to scramble your names, then paste them three times. Not bad. Two hours and 45 minutes. Nine breaks and a kick-ass hour-long chat. Good night. Had some Ked Kaboom time in. Z-A-F-N-S-Z. -S -S need your help for Wednesday, though. I've got my doubts. We need to get Wednesday's slate going tomorrow or tonight if you want. Once I hear back from Aaron, I'll get the hockey PYT going. That's supposed to be here Wednesday, but I don't know if we'll be ready in time. I don't even have it built yet. Trades are open. Uh, Travis, I think it's already closed. It's in our Discord chat room. I 
that's pretty much like any standard Secret Santa, I think. But yeah, I think uh, we've got to close that opportunity. Alright guys, clearly Donner's 3. I'm on fumes now. I'm ready to crash. I even spelled Donner's wrong. I even spelled tiered wrong. I'm going to open both boxes. Again, close me out on the last break on the site. I uh, won't be doing much when we're done here, guys, except hitting the hay. Kedrick's going to ask again if he can spend the night. got to make up a story. There's a reason to tell him no. Anything, guys? What's up, MTV? 21 people. There's Mike. What's up, Mike? AKA the Blair Witch. What's up, buddy? I thought my Banshee joke would go over a little better. You guys remember um, Darby O'Gill and the Little People? All right, Jokic. Little. That's for the Blazers. That's for Hirschberg. All these get top-loaded. Cody Martin. P.J. Washington. Jimmy Buckets. Kemba. Kyle Guy to 99. Tucker, here's your first Zion. Uh, Pels, that's for Kevin Gallagher. Do not smash this with your sledgehammer. Harden, Russell. I heard Harden once out. Aaron Gordon, all clear for takeoff. Pascal, Walker. Mitchell, Darren Fox, Gold Border for the Kings, Kevin Porter, Jr., Cavs, that's for Kevin again, Kobe White for Hirschberg, Chris Paul, Booker, Kobe White, Gold, Bulls, Pascal, Walker, Luca for the Mavs. Acetate crack. That's for Dave Knox. Tremont Waters. What are we calling this, guys? Celtics. Dave Knox. What's the name of that pattern? Kevin Porter Jr., Kobe White again, Jaron Jackson, Trey Young. There's a Luca My House. Demboya, Jordan Poole, Aiton, Sykem, John Wall, DeAndre Hunter. All right, guys. That's it. I'll see you Wednesday. Sweet. Clear it off again. Say goodbye to Kedrick again. Every everything shipped out. Guys, have a good night. Thanks for popping in. Thanks again to Pedro Gomez.
Thanks to my Discord guys. Everybody that helped out. Coach. All right, we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. There's no auto guaranteed in it, Mike. Yeah, it's not guaranteed an auto. All right, guys, I will catch you in the chat room. Have a good night.